Hello guys and welcome back to The Sim here in Brunei. I'm Carl and in this video I'm hoping to show you how to create good looking knobs with good looking text. Let me introduce you to my working prototype of the 737 motorised throttle. Now this is life size, it's in different colours to help demonstrate on camera the different parts. This is the number two throttle assembly and there should be obviously a whole another half of the assembly here. What I need to do is create good looking knobs to go onto this final version. You can see here that I have used a filament printed knob on the Ender 3 and here it is in front of me. And these look good, the text is raised, but however, the closer you get, the worse they look. And if you use the wrong kind of marker, the marker can bleed into them, making them look awful. So trying to move away from that. And next up, we've got the resin printed knobs. Now I like these and these are my favorite. The text is raised by one millimeter. It's then a marker is applied over the top, which is very simple. I'll demo that later as well. And they look pretty spectacular. I would more than happy Put that out in the production unit. The final version that we're going to look at was suggested by Mickey's Flight Deck on Instagram and he suggested that I engrave the text into the knob, get a black wax stick from Amazon which is what I've done, it's just arrived, and then rub the wax into the engraved text and it should highlight it. That's the idea and we'll see which looks best at the end of the video. Let's head inside, get on Fusion 360, and demo how to create text on a round object, which a lot of people ask for. Here we are inside, sat at the computer. We've got Fusion 360 running, and we've got the thrust reverser knob from the new 737 throttle assembly. So what we need to do first is we go to the construct menu and make an axis. I'm gonna catch the position, because I've moved it from another design and now you can see it's put an axis through the center of the unit which is fine. Then we need to construct a plane at an angle. I'm going to select the axes and that actually looks quite good there. Yep, I'm happy with that angle. We're then going to select that plane face and I'm going to push alpha line. It's going to highlight it now. It it's turned me through 90 degrees, which is not what I want. I'm just going to turn it back through 90 degrees. I'm going to select the text tool at the top. I'm going to draw a box from left to right where the, the text will show. Hit enter. There we go. I'm going to type in one because this is the number one first reverser. I'm going to put it in the center. That looks pretty good there. I'm going to hit OK. Then what I'm going to do is going to push E for extrude. I'm going to select the profile. And this time I'm going to select from object and it's going to be the external surface of the knob. And then I'm going to go minus one. I want to engrave it this time. And there you can see that we've got this nice parallel to the surface number one. Hit OK. And it's that simple to create text on a round surface. Of course, we would then fill this full of wax. So if I go to A and put the face in and then select it there. Let me zoom in. Perfect. And that's how it'll look. If I take a few steps back. So the way I've been doing it is the normal resin printing with the raised text. This time I'm gonna push E. I'm gonna select the profile of the text. I'm gonna select from the object and it's gonna be the external surface of the knob and we're going to raise it by one millimeter which is what my usual distance is. Hit enter and there we have a raised one off the surface and because it's got nice sharp edges it's really easy to use a marker pen then to highlight it. Appearance, let's simulate the marker, hit close and that's how we achieve the number one on a round first reverser knob. Let's hide that and do something a little bit more complex and that is the throttle knob. So here's the number two throttle knob and 
we need to hex to go all the way around this so you need multiple planes and it should look like this as you can see first thing we need to do is find the axes there we go axes through a cylinder select any of these circles it doesn't matter and you can see that just in here look that cyan line is the axes and we're going to select plane angle again and on that axis we're going to accept it and what I want to do is I want to rotate this plane so we're looking on it dead on and it actually is going to be there at 90 degrees I'm going to hit OK I'm just going to go back to the the one I've done so it needs to be 80 so on this plane all we're going to write is we're going to select it we're going to create the text and we're going to drag it out hit that this time I want to change the size I know it's it's actually 3.8 but we'll just stick for 4 for the example yep yeah. I'm going to go bold yep yeah. and I'm going to type in auto throttle it looks pretty centered there in fact that's pretty good I'm going to hit OK I'm going to push the E key for extrude select the profile once again the object is the external surface of the knob and the distance will be minus one for engrave perfect this is where it changes now we have to go back to our axes in the middle construct a second plane at a different angle and the way I do it now is grab the blue pin and drag it to where the text is going to be so it's going to be along that line there that looks pretty good 60 degrees we're going to select that plane really should have put the knob in the correct plane to start with then I wouldn't have to keep adjusting it and we're going to draw the text and this time it's two and that's all it's required this is bigger at seven millimeters yeah and that's it we're going to push E for extrude again select the object external surface and we'll go minus one and you can see that that's created that parallel to the surface so I just put it in there for the time being if we go back to the one the correct one you can see the two is closer to the auto throttle so the two looks a bit high and it's not very centered there so all we're going to do is we're going to push we're going to find the two in the middle highlight it push move for M M for move should I say and then we're going to drag it to where we want it so a bit closer and then across yeah that looks good back to the, the back to the axes and once again we're going to need to construct another plane at an angle because we need a third row of text and we're going to spring that pin to about 120 I'm going to guess does that look right yes it does hit OK select the plane spin it back round so it's in the right direction oh I've made a mess of that OK press the text button select the box where we want it I know it's four millimeters it's actually 3.8 3.7 but four will do old and let's type in this in cage and we're gonna hit OK select the text push E for extrude from object select the external surface minus one and hit OK we'll do a quick check to see how and that looks actually pretty spot on from there already just to show you what it's going to look like so faces black hit close and there we go let's remove that sketch 
and that's how it'll look when it's printed. Now you're probably wondering why we had to do three different planes at different angles. Let me show you what happens if we don't do that. I'm going to get rid of all that. So we've gone back in time. I'm just using Control Z. There we go. I've got to go inside the layer. There we go. So if I was to put a 2, 80, and then this, we'll get this right in a second, disengage, that is not how you spell that, disengage, going too fast, right, so that's generally what we want to see on the extra surface, I'm going to hit OK, E for extrude, select the writing, the text, same as before, object, minus one, and hit OK. Now you'll notice that the writing doesn't look correct. It's all at a strange angle that's parallel to the plane that we created inside. And that's why every time you do a different line of text around a knob, you need to rotate the plane around. And uh, this is probably how I started out, but it looks horrid, and it's not how I recommend. Taking that time just to do those extra planes gives a much better finish. We've got our knobs designed, here we go. Cue the B-roll, see you out in the workshop. We're back in the workshop and that was the channel's first B-roll footage. It's a work in progress, but that's what I've spent the last week trying to master. We've got our 3D printed knobs, we've got our filament ones and our resin ones with the raised text. Now, the way I do them is I'd normally paint them first, but as we've got a complete set already done, I'm just gonna do this for demo purposes. Now just apply a black marker to the raised surface of the text. Now normally this is quite easy. It just takes a bit of time. But on the resin prints you can get a really good finish. Now highlighting the text on a resin knob is much easier than a filament printed knob. A filament knob, if you don't use the right marker pen, will bleed into the lines and it can spread out and make a mess. The main downside to using raised text is that if you accidentally touch the knob itself and you go over the line, shall we speak, it makes a mess and it's very hard to correct. And let's move on to the third and final solution, which is engraved text. Here's the number one knob, the throttle knob. Here we go. And I guess the general idea is to rub this wax stick over the text for it to fill it in. Mm -hmm. 
So I think that's it done. Looks a bit of a mess. Let's see if we can get this cleared up. Gonna go and try and scrape away the excess black now without damaging the white paintwork underneath. I'm gonna use the alcohol from the resin bath wash to try and move the remainder of the wax. Because once again, you can't use any chemicals that are too strong that are gonna affect the white paint. So it looks absolutely amazing. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, I really am up for this engraved text that's wax filled. There's another stage on top of this, and that is to put clear lacquer over the top. But before I do that, I might as well fill in the rest of the knobs and do it in one go. Let's see how the rest of the knobs turn out. There should have been a number one as well for this. So there'll be one and two, but I dropped this on the floor while I was painting it and it's got a horrible finish. So that's a dud. Let me see if I can clean this one up. And here's what the fuel cutoff switch number two handle looks like. Onto the thrust reverser knobs. Oh, this one's actually a little bit difficult to get into. It's working. It is actually quite hard to get the wax off. I'm having to put a lot of force in to get it off. I've also let the paint harden for a long time. I think it was 48 hours after I tried a sample off camera and it took the paint off because it wasn't hard enough. The final part to these knobs is now to head outside and give them a coat of lacquer. And hopefully that will seal the wax in so it won't move. In this video, I have shown you the three ways that I've now created knobs and the text on those knobs. The final version, the engraved version that takes a little bit more time. You have to be a little more careful, but the results are outstanding. Just to let you know, that wasn't my idea. That was suggested by Mickey's flight deck and all the credit goes to him. You can see that I fitted the new engraved knobs to the throttle assembly. I'm blown away by how good they look. The best thing is they feel good and they shouldn't get dirty. Now they've got protective lacquer over the top of them, they should be easily wipeable. And I should also help protect them from scratches as well. I think that's it for this video. It's time for me to start thinking about the next video. Until next time, guys, sim out.